Hi, this is Numeric Citizen. In today's video, table of content comes to craft. Let's take a look. So this week, it was a special week as the craft team released a uh, surprise release of craft uh, only on the web version. Uh, they released the table of content uh, support for uh, documents. Um, it was a long, it is a long requested uh, feature by many, many, many users, uh, including me. And uh, if I look at the reaction on Slack and on Circle, uh, people are quite happy with this release. Um, it's not available yet on the uh, native application on Mac or iPad or the iPhone or even on the Windows version of Craft. Uh, it's coming soon. Uh, the, the team uh, wants to get feedback from users, how they like it, if there is any improvements they can make on the table of content feature. And then afterwards, I would expect uh, the Craft team to release the feature uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to all the application. So this is something new from the, the craft team. Uh, it's the first time I'm aware uh, that they are releasing a new feature on the web first. Uh, I can understand the reasons uh, beyond, behind that. It's because releasing a new uh, app version on the App Store takes quite a, a bit of work and they, they have to go through the usual uh, unpopular uh, Apple approval process, which takes uh, time so uh, now they are using the web as a kind of a test bed environment to test a new feature and I think uh, it's a good uh, way to accelerate uh, the feedback loop uh, for the the craft team. So let's have a closer look at the table of content support on the web version of craft. So for the purpose of uh, demonstrating the table of content feature. Uh, I log into my uh, web environment, my craft, my craft web environment uh, that you see here. And this is my uh, test uh, space. Uh, I created a document which will uh, use every heading uh, type. So uh, I'm using the, um, the, the main uh, document. Uh, this is the document title here, but this is the, uh, the main um, title. There is the subtitle here. And there is header one, header two, which are uh, built in this uh, in this way. So if I go here, uh, this is the title. If I go there, this is a subtitle. And if I'm selecting this block here, this is the heading. So the table of content is built using only these three type of titles. Uh, some people express their uh, concern that the strong um, block text. Uh, type is not supported in this current release. Um, my personal preference would be to stay with the title only um, uh, for building the table of content. Um, I, I, I think Craft could add another level of title, um, but I would suggest to stay around those. For those who use uh, a lot of strong um, uh, style in their document, I would suggest them to um, upgrade their strong uh, uh, style to use the heading instead, which will then make uh, a, an appearance in the table of content. So this is the, the test uh, document. Uh, here are two pages with a different title, and they are formatted as a card. But here, this is a typical um, a page that we see inside a document, and the page title will go into the table of content. So uh, in the recent release of Craft, uh, the Craft team updated the sidebar here. If I click on that, so they added this kind of layout where we can see um, uh, cards with the current list of um, spaces and then in the current space selected space we do have the usual uh, uh, smart folders and then in a specific folder we see a selected document and this document here uh, this is the table of content that is corresponding to the actual uh, document uh, content so this is uh, pretty nice uh, one thing is the subtitle here which happens to be the this formatting um, it's kind of a bit um, pale. I mean, it's not as 
strong as the rest of the text. So it's uh, I, I'm not sure I like this styling, but uh, the indentation is uh, quite good. And then for each page, you can expand the content of the page like this. If I click on that, I'll go directly to the actual page on the right. And then in within this page, there's other heading that I'm using uh, to uh, subdivide the content of the page. So that's the basic um, way the table of content feature is implemented in, uh, in this uh, surprise craft release. So now I'll show you the actual uh, content of real table of content for a real document. And the first document that I'll open is the craft Bible. If I go in the craft Bible there, you'll see that uh, there is a different uh, list of sections that are implemented as pages. And uh, there is the guestbook at the end, which is a, using a, a page uh, break, and then the update history of the craft Bible. On the left, in the sidebar, you see the actual table of content, which is actually um, the uh, every section of the craft Bible. Um, I can jump within each section individually just by clicking on a specific uh, heading. I can go inside a um, specific page if I want to. And then you have the path of the actual document that I'm selecting. So I really like the, the way the uh, table of content is display, displayed on the in the sidebar. Um, so that's for the craft Bible. If I go back to my uh, documents, I can look at the uh, Numeric Citizen Digital Garden as another example. So again, th there is this um, uh, uh, the content of the digital garden itself. But if I go on the left, there is a different uh, section for each part of the digital garden to which I can simply jump to directly from the uh, sidebar. So it's a very well done execution. There is one thing I'd like to see though on this is the fact that the um, if I go at the uh, main level, of the digital garden, if I select this um, uh, link, and then if I jump to the actual uh, uh, website of the digital garden, uh, the table of content is not available on the actual shared document. Uh, I'd like to see uh, the craft team to enable an option where on the left or on the right or in somewhere on the document, the user could just expand the uh, document structure uh, by using by reusing the table of content uh, feature. It will be very uh, interesting to, to get this information right in a shared document. So I have to say that when the feature was first announced, uh, some of my documents needed to have some tweaking because um, I, I wasn't using the heading formatting uh, the right way. So if I go back on the uh, digital garden, uh, I had to do some tweaks uh, to make it look great on the uh, uh, sidebar here. It's the same for the craft Bible where I had to uh, tweak the end of the section here. So I have the update history appearing right there on the left portion of the sidebar. So you'll have to revisit some of your content in order to take advantage of the, um, the table of content feature. It doesn't take a lot of work, but you have to settle on a specific uh, standard that you, that you like uh, in order to uh, be consistent across all your documents. So that's uh, something that, to, that you have to, uh, to, uh, to know in order to take advantage of this feature. So the table of content feature is very, very handy uh, to navigate uh, in a long and complex document with uh, a lot of pages or sub pages. And this is really helpful to uh, navigate in the, those uh, rich content. By uh, having the feature of enabling the table of content for shared document, it would be uh, a good way for uh, helping users or visitors to uh, consume or navigate in those documents too. So 
the way that it could be implemented is when you go in the shared um, button here, once a document is shared, this is the case for the, um, the, the My Digital Garden, this could uh, go in the event option where there could be an option somewhere that says uh, show table of content and boom, just like that, the uh, actual shared document would just display a, a hamburger menu or something like that to enable the user to navigate to a specific portion of the document. I really would like to see that coming in a future release of uh, the table of content feature. And the, the, again, the other thing I'd like to see uh, maybe tweak is the use of some, um, uh, uh, I think I would say like the, the font or the actual color of the text use uh, within the, um, the table of content, which is not exactly the way I would like it. It's a, a little bit uh, too pale or I don't know, there's some tweaks that could be uh, implemented to in order to make it um, better looking. And if you look at the actual table of content here of the craft Bible, if you use uh, emojis within your uh, headings, um, you'll add another uh, way of uh, another visual tweak to the table of content, which is uh, even uh, nicer to to the look. Uh, in in my case, that's my my personal preference. So that's the overview of the table of content feature. I don't know when this will be released in the final form and when it will come to. Uh, all the apps, but I can't wait to see that coming on the Mac and on the iPad. Here's the final observation uh, that I was uh, just finishing recording uh, the actual uh, this video, and just when I thought I, wa I was I was done, I discovered this little trick. If you are using the web version of Craft, so if you go on the left uh, side on the on the left edge of the sidebar and you just move the mouse over there you'll see that the um, the sidebar expand all the cards at all the level so you see the list of space and within the selected space you see the actual uh, uh, content uh, in this area and then you see the uh, actual selected document table of content so it's pretty nice to be able to just over uh, this and then let it retract uh, automatically. So that's something I, I just discovered. I certainly would like to see this feature coming to the Mac version of Craft. Uh, I hope the are uh, the team Craft is listening this video until the end. So that's it for this quick look and a quick overview of the table of content feature of Craft. Uh, if you like this video, just hit like. If you don't subscribe to my YouTube channel, I think you should do, uh, you should subscribe because you don't want to miss any upcoming videos. Uh, again, thanks for watching uh, until the end. Thanks for being there and see you guys for another one. Peace. Mm -hmm.